AP Physics 1, welcome in. It's Mr. Heinrich. Good to see you guys. And we're looking at Unit 5 FRQ1 from the AP Classroom Progress Checks. Let's take a look at what's going on. We've got a pulley and it's made from a solid disc that can rotate with negligible friction about a fixed axle at its center, as shown in this figure. The pulley has a mass M and a radius R, and its mass is distributed such that its rotational inertia is one-third MR squared about its center. A string is wrapped around a pulley and a downward force of magnitude FS is exerted on the end of the string. Okay, so for part A, this circle in figure two represents the pulley. On figure two, draw and label arrows that represent the forces, not components, that are exerted on the pulley while the force of magnitude FS is exerted on the string. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the point at which the force is exerted on the pulley. And looking at that pulley, I can see three forces. Now one of them was already given, right? We have FS, this pulling force that's exerted right here. So we're gonna draw that one in, but while I go over to the paper, I want you thinking, what are the other two forces? All right, there's our axle, there's FS like we previously discussed, but what else is acting? It's a mass, there must be gravity. And that gravity is acting from the center of gravity right there at the middle of the pulley. Also, if it was just these two forces, this pulley would accelerate towards the Earth. We'd have gravity pulling it down. Simultaneously, we would pull with FS, and so the system would rotate as it fell to the ground. That makes no sense, because we know inherently there must be some upward supporting force, and that upward supporting force is the force on the axle. So we're going to call it FA, just like that. Part A2, using Newton's second law in rotational form, What's that again? What is that again? It is torque net equals I alpha. I being the moment of inertia times angular acceleration. So we're going to derive an expression for the tangential acceleration of a point located on the outer edge of the pulley. Express your answer in terms of M, R, F, S, and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing either a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference booklet. Perfect, okay. So this is what we're given. This is what we're trying to find, tangential acceleration. I think it would be smart to find angular acceleration first. So let's dive into this idea. Yes, it looks like F net equals MA, but this is the angular version. Torque net equals the moment of inertia times angular acceleration. All right, so looking at torque net, we need to ask ourselves what forces actually produce torques. If you have a line of action which goes directly through your forces, and that line of action goes through the axis of rotation, then that force produces no torque. Okay, so that means FA and FG produce no torque because their line of action goes directly through the axis of rotation. But FS, its line of action does not go through the axis of rotation. In fact, it has what we call a lever arm or a moment arm and that lever arm is the radius of the pulley. It is important to note that this lever arm must be perpendicular to the force in question. So this is the only force producing a torque, so we're saying Fs times R equals, and remember that this moment of inertia was initially given as one-third mR squared times alpha. Now I'm going to solve this whole expression for alpha, and then we'll talk about this tangential acceleration. This R will cancel with one of these R's. This is like R times R, so I'm crossing out the squared. I'm going to multiply 3 to each side, and I'm going to divide by M. So I would end up with alpha equals 3FS divided by M and the remaining R down there. We're almost done at this point. We have FS, that's given, M is given, R is given, but we're not looking for angular acceleration. We're looking for tangential acceleration. And the relationship between this and this is given as A equals R alpha. So then we can solve for alpha here, and I would get alpha equals A divided by, let's call it capital R, because that's how they're referring to radius. I'm just going to plug this in right over here. I'm going to get A over R equals 3FS over MR. We would multiply both sides by this R to isolate tangential acceleration, and you can see the R's cancel out. And we're left with acceleration, and I'll call it tangential here, equals 3FS over M. All done. Awesome. Let's go to the next part. All right, so they've made a slight adjustment to the system in part B. Let's take a look. 
Next, the string is wound back onto the pulley and a block with a weight equal to FS is hung from the end of the string as shown in figure three. The block is released from rest and accelerates downward and the pulley has an angular acceleration of magnitude alpha B. Part B, indicate how alpha B compares to alpha A, the magnitude of the pulley's acceleration for the original scenario in part A when the string was pulled downward with a force of magnitude FS. So is the angular acceleration of this new system, alpha B, going to be different than our angular acceleration of the old system, alpha A? Well, it would be tempting but incorrect to pick this last option, alpha B equals alpha A. And you might say, but the weight is the same exact force as the force I was pulling with in part A. So why isn't it the same angular acceleration? Well, in this old system, it was just you pulling with FS, and that was it. You were creating this downward tension in the string, and it was unfurling the pulley. But here, there's actually two forces. You have the weight, which would be the force of gravity, minus the upward tension that is created. So you actually have a reduction in your net force or your total combined force. So the total combined force unraveling this system is actually less than the previous system when it was just FS. Did you follow all that? So I'm gonna say it in a nice clean statement, get ready to write. So choose this middle option first off, and here comes the justification. Alpha B is less than alpha A, period. In the system with the block, there are two forces acting. There is the force of gravity downward and an upward force of tension. Since these act in opposite directions, the net force is less than that in the previous scenario, part A. And since the net force in system two is less, comma, thus creating a lesser net torque, comma, then the angular acceleration in parentheses alpha B will also be less. Okay, that's it. That was the justification. And notice we didn't derive expressions or manipulate equations as we justified our selection. Have a great day. I'm happy we're finally into Unit 5. I hope this is helping you out. Like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Later.